Welcome back, Time Crunch fans. Today is another Q&A episode where I answer questions directly from you, our listeners. Again, we, we, we have a ton pouring in. I've, I've been scratching my head to see, you know, do we do some, um, just like some quick, uh, like Instagram, like AMA stuff on this. Cause you guys are really pumping out the, the questions here, which is awesome. So I'm, I'm going to go through three, uh, questions. There's even a little bit of a comment that we're going to go through here today, all in response to the shows that I've been pumping out, uh, in the past. So this is awesome. I, I love the interaction that we're having and really the whole concept of this podcast is to give you our audience, uh, you know, the equipment you need to be the best athlete possible. So keep those comments, keep the questions coming. Totally awesome. If this is your first time joining us, um, what we're doing here is you can go over to trainright.com backslash podcast, and you can click on the button that says, ask a training question. Those, uh, questions get sent directly to me and I answer those questions on random episodes as we, uh, clip along here along with, uh, other kind of topical training, um, uh, topics that we do anything from uh, current supplement to uh, functional threshold training, VO2 max training, heat training, all this kind of stuff. So uh, if you looked for a podcast to see how best you can do all things endurance training, you found it at the Time Crunch Cyclist. So let's get into some of these questions. Okay. First one is not a question, uh, but it's a comment. And this is coming from, from Scott. And he says, uh, on your heat protocol podcast, you repeatedly use the term quality to describe intensity. In the real world, quality and intensity are not synonymous, but certainly seem to be in endurance sports. But the only, the only way quality can mean inten uh, intensity is if low intensity conversely is not quality. <laughs> You cannot simultaneously bemoan people referring to base endurance training as junk miles while referring to intensity as quality. Boom, Scott. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, and you're absolutely right in 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 um, either you know guessing or saying that that's a cultural thing. It it definitely is, and it's confusing. So personally, I'll work to change that language, like on this podcast, as well as in articles and even to my own athletes, um, saying that, you know, quality work does not equal intensity. In fact, you can do, you know, zone two endurance <laughs> quality work, and that's just fine. So yeah, in, in, in um, for the audience listening here, I did a heat training protocol podcast just a couple of weeks ago, you can go back and find it. And that's what, that's what he's referring to. So when I was saying, Hey, you go out and do some, um, quality work, I, I was referring to intensity and that's what he means there. And I, and I bring this up because actually, you know, cause Scott brings up a very good point. Um, that can be a confusing aspect in the world of endurance sports because we coaches, or at least I guess in the community of CTS and some other coaches, I know we, we do say that we do use that term. Okay. But also to be clear, you, you know, as I said, you can have quality miles at all training zones. And that's what we preach here. Anything from aerobic to anaerobic and beyond however many training zones you actually want to want to use out there. So thank you, Scott. Uh, that's a great comment. And now I can't wait to see how many other people <laughs> chime in with other comments on on stuff that I'm saying here on the podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to bring up. Thanks again, Scott. Okay. Number two, just listen to the podcast about heat acclimation. And again, that was the one I did a couple of weeks ago and had a couple of questions for those not racing, but for general enjoyment, recreational fitness rider here is heat acclimation, something that would benefit all of us, particularly those like me who are older about 64 and don't sweat as much as I used to also for passive heat acclimation could sitting in a parked car, in the sun, do the same thing as a sauna. I don't have access to sauna and I don't want to buy a gym membership for periodic heat acclimation. Thanks so much for the podcast and access to good information. That's coming from Pete. So short answer here, I, I wouldn't advise the hot car for this. Okay. And, and while there may be some people listening to this and they say, well, that's kind of a silly idea. It's actually not. I mean, like sauna, steam room, oh, there's just hot rooms, right. That we're heating up to, to get this job done of stimulating or stressing our, our bodies to heat. And then we 
you know, move our bodies away from there and hopefully we um, make the adaptation. So that's, you know, Pete, cool, good, like outside of the box thinking there. I did refer to a hot bath protocol on there too. So I, I would go back and revisit that if you don't want to do the gym stuff. But to the car aspect, I, I wouldn't do it for a couple of different reasons. One, it's really hard to control the heat in a situation like that. And the bailout points can be a little tricky. I mean, it, you know, you're sitting down, you're cozy. I mean, you could drift off to sleep and that's bad. Um, it, it, you don't know how hot actually is in there. And then if you do open the door, if it's a hot day out there, you're not going to get the kind of cool rush that you would coming out from a sauna. Okay. But so that's very contrasted there. Meanwhile, when you're at a facility using a sauna or a steam room, there's a lot more other people around just in case something does go wrong. So in my opinion, if you're going to use some room or some device, I wouldn't use the car. I would use the stuff that I, um, I talked about on the heat protocol podcast. You can also, and I talked about this on the podcast as well. You can also just go out and do training in the heat yourself. You just have to decrease the intensity, aim for that six to 10 day window of, um, continual exposure, progressive, continual exposure every, every day. And I, and I, you know, you want to start low, go slow sort of thing. Again, I talk about all that on the podcast, but I guess, in the end, my best advice is just go back to that podcast like I talked about and, and, and bring out some of those nuggets of information. Don't use the car to do that. But I will say this, even for general recreational athletes, if you're just in, trying to increase the fun factor, yeah, it's, it's important to have um, a heat acclimation if you want to keep on going out and having fun in the sun right? Because we don't want to be at the mercy of necessarily of these extreme environments. If our bodies can make the adaptation to where we can, um, bear kind of that stress out there and, and go out and still have fun. So in my opinion, yeah, even if you're not going for a podium somewhere, it's, it's definitely worth it. So, um, again, Pete, thanks for writing in on that question. Good out, out of the box thinking. Um, most people do have a bathtub that they could use and it's simply drawing some hot water, um, to achieve that same heat stimulus in your own, in your own bathroom. So go ahead and try that. And I think you'll have some success there. All right. The third and final question of the day, this is a little long one, so I'm going to summarize it. Um, but we'll get to the point. Here we go. Former CTS athlete, Xterra mountain biker, endurance mountain biker, runner here, <laughs> now just training and playing for fun. Here's my question. What are your thoughts on why I can't seem to get my heart rate up as high, parentheses, as I feel it should be, in parentheses, when doing hard intervals? Example, max efforts for anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds. This is both for run and bike sessions. She then gives more kind of like context and background with some of the heart rate numbers, but I'm just going to speed ahead. I'm a healthy 50 year old female, lifelong athlete, not as much as endurance as strength these past few years, but I still have great endurance and live most of my time at altitude. This issue happens both at home and at lower elevations would like to improve both my punchy speed and pure aerobic fitness. Welcome your thoughts. Thanks red. Yeah. So short answer here is if you're doing 30 to 60 second max efforts, in my opinion, there's no need to look at your heart rate response. Heart rate's just too slow to respond to those short, high intensity efforts. So that max number is not applicable for monitoring performance. In fact, I think it's a good reminder here for everyone that heart rate in itself is not a performance metric. It's simply an output to the work or effort being done. Therefore, focus on effort. So rate of perceived effort, that scale of one to 10, or use power or use pace when doing short anaerobic efforts like this. Don't get me wrong. I like heart rate's valuable, but for short punchy stuff, it's not as valuable as a guide as you know, just straight old rate of perceived effort scale. Additionally, as we age, we'll generally see our max heart rate decrease over time. 
This is not linear and there's some individuality going on, such as some don't see as much of a fall off in that max or top end heart rate um, as some others. But in general, it's, it's a known physiological phenom phenomenon that does happen. To me though, it doesn't matter. Why? Again, performance is what matters. So pace, power, distance, kind of whatever in perceived effort, that is what matters when you're doing these hard sessions. <laughs> the, fi the final thing I'll say here, and I, I use this and I kind of like laugh because a lot of us coaches would have had kind of these philosophical arguments of does, does max heart rate even exist? Because if it's always kind of moving and it's kind of increasing with age and then decreasing with age over time, does it exist and why does it matter? So food for thought there. If you want to get philosophical, I'll leave it. <laughs> I'll leave it at that for, uh, for now though. To recap today though, with those kind of like three questions and topics, I'll just say, yep, quality doesn't only pertain to intensity. It's intentional training at all intensities should be considered quality training. Heat acclimation is worth it for performance seekers as well as fun seekers. Just do so in a controlled, progressive way, like I discussed in my previous protocol um, and previous podcast, all about this a few weeks ago. If you don't have a sauna or steam room, you can simply just use a hot bath protocol, or you can also decrease intensity and get out there and do some uh, low intensity exercise using Mother Nature. Max heart rate, finally, max heart rate for 60 seconds or less on high intensity intervals isn't the best metric to monitor performance. Use pace, power, distance, perceived effort, anything like that to best monitor these sessions. Your cardiovascular system just it has some leg time to it. So those numbers that you see in the heart rate monitor won't match up well to the work being done during those max efforts in short durations. So Thanks all for your submissions and questions here on the Time Crunch Cyclist podcast. Look forward to ripping out a few more of these uh, in, in the coming days, in the coming weeks. Keep on tuning back for more of your answers here. And as always, if you like what we're doing, go ahead, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, wherever you listen and share it with your friends because that is the best way to grow what we're doing here. This is Coach AP over and out.